Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Hotline League. Now, uh, it's too bright outside, so I don't have the cool setup that I had last time. Mark, however, does have the strange color-changing light that annoys everyone. Is there no way to just pick one color? I mean, there is, but I need to go find the remote that does it. And okay. I don't think it annoys people. I did not see many people complaining about it. Yeah, people said they wanted it to be one color. Uh, but either I, way, that was you. so if you're if you're just watching Hotline League for the first time, let me tell you a little bit about how the show goes. Uh, oh, we're getting a little bit of robot voice. I don't know why. You guys tell me if it, if it gets fixed. If not, we'll restart the show, but I think we should be good. Uh, either way, if you're just tuning in to Hotline League for the first time, and by the way, that makes sense because this is only the second time that we've done the show, uh, but uh, this is a call-in show. So we're going to spend the first couple minutes maybe talking about something, probably best of ones, uh, and then we'll be taking your calls on a variety of topics, but probably mostly on the topic that we're discussing on the show today. If it seems like we're unprepared, it's because Mark and I didn't have a chance to talk too much before the show because he was doing another show, which a lot of you were watching. So now you just continue on the Mark Zimmerman show watching train. But either way, uh, if you would like to call in, the best way to do that is by joining the Discord, which is on the screen right now. And uh, if you, d you join the Discord, you'll be jumped into the general channel with a bunch of other randos. Who knows? Maybe meet yourself because you don't know what you're going to say or hear in there. And then uh, there's a general chat channel. You just type your question in. Uh, we'll move you to the waiting room. Mark will be come down there, make sure that your audio stuff is great, and then we'll bring you on the air if you are selected. Uh, sometimes we do we do our best to honor people who are subs, uh, but it's not but it's not really set up yet to support that. So, you know, if you are a sub, maybe there's an increased chance, but no promises, and don't please get disappointed if you don't get picked. Uh, Mark, how are you doing? I am doing well. Sorry, I was uh, spamming your chat with the Discord link. Uh, basically, you just join the Discord. We'll ask some questions. Uh, I am very scatterbrained. I wouldn't say scatterbrained. It's very hectic with all the world stuff that was going on straight into the GLT and now this show. So uh, I'm actually super looking forward to it. What I was saying is if you are watching from Scar's hosted channel, just make sure you have this chat up as well. So if you just want to copy and paste your way into this uh call group it's a little bit easier uh and other than that i uh, one thing i was talking about that i would love to keep talking about on glt was what it was like as viewers watching the play-in tournament that's something i wouldn't mind getting some perspective on from the average fan cool well so maybe we will uh well maybe we'll follow up with that in a little bit but i think the best thing to talk about i'm sure you already talked about this on the show mark uh your other show but um you know as as everybody's getting into the discord maybe we can have a quick chat about the return of best of ones to the NALCS. What's your stance? I'm curious what you were you were talking about on the other show. Yeah, we, we hit it briefly at the very beginning. I haven't had a chance to read the entire article. Um, and it sounded like in the article, based off my quick skimming of it, that there were some stats that they were using to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, they basically did some surveys. And they found that people frequently uh, cited the, like, the best of threes as... A reason why they weren't watching as much and because they uh they said also that they had a hard time watching an entire best of three matchup where it was much more approachable whenever it was just best of ones and uh more than half of fans start watching a best of three regardless of what game the series teams were currently playing they're not getting the payoff of watching a series unfold so they talked to fans and basically this is what fans said they wanted which makes sense because a lot of people i think saw the viewership dip whenever best of uh, threes came into play. And uh, and so it, it makes sense that in their investigations, they were finding best of ones were perhaps something that viewers wanted more of. Right. And I think for the casual fan, that's 100% true. I do think some more hardcore fans appreciated having the best of three. But there are a couple things for me that uh, stand out. And, and one of them is just that, there's still best of ones in tournaments. The big thing for me was like when we get to best of threes in the, you know, how how leagues run, I expect tournaments to change the same way. We'll get rid of like these best of one group stages and maybe we'll find a, a different solution. And we're still using best of ones at tournaments. And I understand why just do it. It's like it's so hard to schedule anything other than best of ones with a large number of teams and get through the tournament quickly. So I understand why there's still best of ones in tournaments and if there's going to be best of ones in tournaments i think it's important that somewhere else in the competitive scene you play best of ones so i'm actually 
pretty all right from the competitive standpoint of going to best of ones during the regular season. Yeah, I think it's fine. I was surprised a little bit because I, I know that like the hardcore Reddit crowd really supported best of threes whenever they first were being talked about. I was surprised. Like I felt, I felt like there was so much discussion over the past year and a half about people kind of realizing maybe they didn't like the best of threes as much people talking about viewership, etc. So I'm a little surprised that there was so much outcry of people on, the, I know it's the most hardcore fans, but there was one highly upvoted comment that was suggesting that there be four best of ones a week, like round Robin, you play four different teams a week. You just double the amount of games that's crazy, and it was like a lot of people agreeing with it. Can you imagine like having to prep for four teams in a it's single It's impossible. Week? Yeah. Yeah, th- there's no way you could do that. I think uh, what you would probably do if you wanted to keep best of ones and a higher number of games would keep the double stream uh, and then just have like, you know, those games all going on. And, uh, you know, I-, I guess you have to speed it up somehow that way. But at the end of the day, I think the double stream going was was even more important than the best of threes going. Yeah. Um, because that's that's where like a lot of viewers were, were having a hard time keeping up with the league. There is viewer burnout. It's like you just couldn't follow the league. You only watched your favorite teams, and then you're less invested in the league because you feel like you know more, less about it. You're like, I haven't watched an NBA game in forever. I don't know who the hell these guys are, what they're doing. So I think simplifying all of that is much better for basically everyone who's not in your or my position. Yeah. And even and even us, it makes our jobs easier. Yeah, than I like. I, I first off, I think from a viewer, I I was excited for best of threes from a because i thought it would be good for viewership good for nalcs good for the strength of the teams i don't think that there's very much evidence that the north american teams have improved because of this i'm getting this great lens flare here what is going on here Uh, i have to ascend into heaven now goodbye mark um i it was nice knowing you dude yeah, yeah can i have your clothing yes it's great it's very very great anyway uh, so I th- I just don't think that there was much of a evidence that best of threes actually did anything. It'll make everyone's lives easier, I think. And I'm I'd be very curious. I assume that the players eventually were like, yeah, best of ones are probably fine. Um, but I'm kind of curious to see. Maybe I'll ask some players, NALCS players at Worlds. But it's kind of a weird time to announce it. So. Uh, so just a heads up, anyone who's typing in general, I can only drag you into talk with us if you're also in the general voice lobby. Just yeah. as because there's someone who I wanted to grab, but I don't see him in the general voice lobby. Yeah. I was looking at yellow sub specifically. So I would love uh, to, yeah, I'd love to talk to fans at least in the beginning. I don't know if you're okay with us, Mark, talking to fans in the beginning about their take on the best of one, best of three, switch. And, you know, people who disagree, people who agree, people who see different things that maybe we haven't brought up. Super happy to talk about that stuff. Yeah, uh, I'd love to start there. And then once we find out who the first couple people we talk to, hopefully we can find someone with a different perspective. Yeah, so yeah. if you're pro best of three and we grab you first, later we'll look for someone who's pro best of one. So. Yeah. Very good. So uh, either way, if you want to hop in, it looks like Yellow Sub has made it into the, the general chat. You can check in on him. Uh, either way, if you're just tuning in or this is your first time watching the show, this is a call-in show, so we'll be talking to fans live on the air. Uh, right now, Mark is setting us up for a chat with... Yeah, he's um, good to go. You ready to bring yep. in the first caller? Yep, first caller. Welcome to the show, Yellow Sub. Uh, where are you calling from? Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm calling from Austin. Austin. That's a great city. Great town. So hip. Yeah. Uh I can't understand you guys, though. Oh, that's a problem. Why can you not understand us? It, your your voice sounds, like, robotic. Okay. I think that's on that's your end. Yeah. Travis and I can hear each other just fine. Well, Yellow Sub, if oh, okay. you can hear me, just go ahead and explain to us sort of your take on the format change. Yeah, how yes. about you give okay. us your perspective, and then we'll just we'll kick you out because yeah. it sounds like it's going to be hard to have a back and forth. Okay. But at least we'll get your perspective first. Sure. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so I'm kind of of two minds on it. I thought both best of threes and ones have their advantages. Uh, I kind of preferred best of threes just because it allowed teams to get more practice in. And compared to like Korea, where they have best of threes constantly, I think there was at least some noticeable uh, difference in the skills just because of the format. There was more like stage matches that were allowed to be played. Uh, 
I guess the the main thing is if they weren't going to do best of threes, I would have preferred that they switch to best of twos. So I've heard some people talk about best of twos, but what what about best of twos makes it so much better for you? Because I know some people when they had best of twos in Europe complain about not having a definitive winner, which feels bad, as well as you still have the scheduling problem, right? Where like the average fan, like sure you're right. down so, some games, but you still have a lot of games. Yeah. Okay. So I've heard that argument before, but I don't think it's particularly persuasive because I think in a best of two, what you can do is assign point values to each win, right? So if you go one, one in a series, then you give one point to each team. But if you go two in a series, two, two, oh, in a series, you give three points to the team that goes two, oh, right? So it makes each game valuable. And it also, I guess, makes sure that each, uh, how am I saying this? Like, it makes sure that the series doesn't get like too long, right? And you don't have like kind of any scheduling issues then because you know every game is going to be played no matter what. I think the sad thing is best of twos are just never like, regardless of the advantages of them, which I, I'm, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with you, but uh, I do think, is your light changing even faster now, Mark? I don't know what's going on. It like cracks out. Like it goes slower or faster. I'll, I'll change it. Okay. And we'll finish this point. And then I'll... Either, either way. I'll throw this light out a window. I, yeah, thank you. Either way, I it's so funny to me because regardless of if there is a, if best of two is better, I think like it has become such a meme now that like Riot would never risk, you know, recreating the meme by bringing back best of twos and ties and all this stuff. Like it just doesn't seem like something. And I think also from a it doesn't I don't think it necessarily solves the viewership perspective uh, or situation because I think we did have a lot of best of threes actually only go to best of twos. So I think what they're trying to solve is a viewership problem, and I'm not sure that Best of Twos resolves that. Yeah, I, w- I would say uh, the Best of Two problem, you'll probably still have to run with double stream, so you have that whole issue still, which is something it feels like generally the average viewer is against. And then Best of Twos are arguably just worse than Best of Three, so if you're going to keep that, just stay Best of Three. Uh, best of Two, like, yeah, the, the see that, like figuring out how to make them feel important is fine, but it still is something that I think fans just generally, regardless of the point importance, want to see the resolution of it where it's like, oh, yeah, they, they both took a game off each other. Who's going to finally win? You know, I think you still lose that um, perspective yeah. or like that, that appreciation. Like, wow, they were the ones who did the final adaptation and took it. So if that's the case, though, do you think there should be some sort of uh, at least like they should have consistency then? Because right then there there's like an issue where you have some tournaments where there's not best of ones right or like i don't think there's not been best of ones in a tournament has there for like years there's always best of ones but like okay okay so if that's the case then do you think that best of ones are a good like indicator for determining the best team then because i think i saw there was like some stat on reddit that's like if it was best of ones, TSM would have been like fourth or fifth place in the regular season. But because of best of threes, they're number one. I understand there's like a viewership problem. So I guess then my question is, how do you balance viewership versus like, you know, true competitive showing? How often do you feel like a team that was supposed to win a season didn't win the season? But I think that's only remedied because of the best of in playoffs. Sure. Well, but sure. I mean... As but long as it's point. getting remedied one way or the other, right? Like, it, they're not switching to best of ones in the playoffs. So you'll still have, at the end of the split, a good way to prove that the best team won and that they go on to whatever international event moves on. But I think I, that has I serious think... implications then when it comes to teams that don't make playoffs versus teams that do make playoffs. So, yeah, I feel like I don't feel like... A yeah, team... but if you're not a good best of one team, you're not going to do good at the international competition. So, in a sense, you could argue having best of ones as your regular season is a better indicator of how you will perform at the international competition because you have to at least be competent at best of ones as well, right? Okay. All right, that's fair. Yeah, because what what happened? Like, other than A and X, I can't think of a time that the best of one system has like literally shit the bed and been horrible. Like, that's the only time I can think of where like I was like, God damn, best of ones. Um, and other than that, I think it's mostly been fine. And if you're going to keep best of one in tournaments, then I'm 100% fine with it in the regular season. I think I think the only counter to that, Mark, is that 
quarters normally suck at Worlds because you and you could argue it's because the group stage does not do a it's good job of setting up good matchups. What do you say? I said it's because there's three Korean teams. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But uh, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Either way, thank you, Yellow Sub, so much for coming on the show. Wait, I have one think... more question. Or not question, sorry. It's still on the same line, just another format change. Sure. Like, what if you think they did it Korean style, where instead of it being all stacked on the weekend, they did it throughout the week? I don't think that's, that's good for NA. Because I, I just don't feel like the audience is prepared yet to tune in uh, on all these different nights. Like, I think they love the weekends are LCS. It's very concentrated. And I think that that it's much safer for Riot to move back to like the tried and true strategy than to split it up across a bunch of nights. That's that's where I agree because I actually don't hate the idea of trying to split it up a little bit more to keep a higher number of games. I, I really do like having more games. Uh, that's that's what I do feel uh, you're losing a little bit more so than like oh man now it's best of ones versus best of threes. It's more the game number. Um, but right now moving to a franchise model, you just want to move to something that works for now. Uh, I think you know there's no saying that they'll never change it again in the future i do think they'll be hesitant to but you just want to go to something that you have some historical basis to be like yeah people watch because the worst thing you could do is like get all these teams to buy in for 10 million dollars put games on monday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday or something then no one watches the monday wednesday thursday games yeah. okay all right i agree i i just wanted to know what your guys perspective was yep. thanks for having me thanks for calling thanks in you also appreciate it all right take care yeah all right, so good, uh, good chat with Yellow Sub. I can't move him back. For, okay, I don't know why you lost your privileges. Yeah. I'll handle it. Give me my privileges back. Okay, so nah. uh, next up we have uh, someone who I believe we're going to chat with somebody who uh, is a fan of the switch back to best of ones, and so I'm interested to sort of hear what he thinks because mostly the fans have been saying that they're not as much, they're not as happy with this. So if you want to go ahead and bring him in, uh, P King, P King, is that how you pronounce your name? Uh, just King. One it's fine. Okay, but, King hey. with a P in front of it. King, where are you calling from? Seattle, my boy. Seattle, nice. Seattle's a great city. Love it. West Coast, fantastic. Uh, so Mark ha is fixing his lighting right now, but uh, maybe you can start to share some of your opinions uh, on the broadcast, King, while he's fixing that. Sure. Okay, so... First of all, I'd like to say that I am actually a pretty big fan of the best of three uh, format because for me that works really well with my schedule. I like to build uh, binge watch the LCS. But then are you binge can... watching it on the weekends? Essentially, you're like binge yes. watching it live. But I've never had a problem with watching best of ones in the past, and I don't think anyone else has. So I think that it, it's it's proven to work, and I really like Mark's point earlier where he says that when we're moving towards this new model, that you know it's, it's proven to be very effective for the for the crowd. Yeah. What? So you watch all on the weekends? You were saying, sorry. Like yeah. You watch. Okay. What did you think of the dual stream situation before? Uh, there were pluses and minuses. I mean, it, it was nice to be able to just sort of switch between games at my leisure and, or series, I mean, and, you know, I mean, that was nice for me because I could keep track of the games that I wasn't, that I didn't really care about so much, but I could also pay full attention to the ones that I do care about. Yeah. And did you find often that you were switching back and forth? Because I'm very curious about this. You you were a binge watcher, you said. So you, you know, because I think a lot of people are casual fans. They maybe watch a little bit at a time. But I'm very curious to sort of hear, like, how did you approach the dual streams? And is the, the single, like, the best of one and the single streams going to help you out? Right. This, this is where I'm interested, too, because I think for a lot of people, we are breaking it down into two groups where it's people who watch every game and people who watch casually. And you seem to have a middle group where you kind of watch every game, but you're still in favor of best of ones. Exactly. Yeah. I, I really like the best of one format where I would have one stream up and just watch the whole thing. And that was great, you know, and... I mean, there's kind of pluses and negatives to the whole thing as far as, like, the, the pro players and the practice that they get. Like, it's debatable whether or not one game is going to give them 
enough uh, practice against certain teams as three games would. But then again, most of the times it's favored one side or the other, and the losing team doesn't seem to get that much better afterwards. So I think that it's probably better to just split it apart, give them time in between games, in between teams that they have to play, let them speak with their coaches and analysts, make it best of one, and you know structure their scrims a little bit better with riot interaction, like they had said in the post today. I think it's a good system. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so one one point, and thank you for calling in Peking. I'm going to move him back up to the top as I rant about this a little bit. Uh, one point that we've heard a lot is like you know stage experience and this and that, and that was something that I think you heard pro teams talking about in season five, four or five, before they really started, uh, you know, playing in this best of three setting. And now that they've done it, you haven't really heard them say, oh, wow, this was so great because we got so much more experience in a while. And I know a lot of teams are at Worlds right now, so they're probably not thinking about the potential changes back to best of one. But I also don't think I've seen anywhere that the players come out and been like, oh, man, this best of one is really going to hurt my ability to, to learn the game because I play less games. Yeah. I mean, they still scrim all the time. Most of them work more off scrim data. Well, and they said that they were going to, or that they had talked to a lot of the players and that the majority of them agreed that this would be a better system. Now, what is very funny is I'm very curious to know how uh, pro players would have felt about this if you'd asked them this, like, this time last year. Because what has changed now is that pro players are getting a rev share next year of the LCS. And so if you go to the players and say, listen, we know this, you won't be as competitive because you're going to be doing this, but viewership's oh, going to be on. better. You're going to make more money because we're going to make more money because better viewership means more money. It's interesting now, like the pro player incentives have changed. You can go down the tinfoil hat theory. That's, that's, not, that, that's not that crazy. It's, it's not that tin. It's just like a little, little piece of tinfoil in your hair. But what I'll say is I like even – without any other incentives to consider about the money and this and that, I just haven't heard people really be like, oh man, best of ones are going to suck for us now. Yeah. And like team owners, I know we're in favor of this. Like they, they were all behind the scenes talking about how like best of ones were going to be better. I'm sure they're thinking more about their bottom line than the players are. So I can understand it for them, but for players, a lot of them are more motivated, I think by like winning and things like that. And I still haven't heard anyone come out. But like I said, a lot of them are busy at World. Yeah. yeah. Very true. Uh, do we have somebody else to... Uh, sorry, I was I was tangenting there for a second. No, no it's all good. Uh, I see Panda Pornstar asking a question. Maybe that's a person we could... We're going to get our first repeat caller? Yeah, maybe. maybe what was maybe. he asking about? I don't see him in here. I want to defend the best one format and how this may affect the European League. All right, let me, let me grab him back okay. down. If you're just tuning in for the first time, you can uh, call into the show. I'll go ahead and put the description up on the screen or the chat, the Discord link up on the stream. You join the Discord, ask your question in the general chat. Make sure you're in the general audio channel and you get a chance to be on the stream talking to both me and Mark and sharing your opinions and your questions with the stream. Going to have uh, Mark come back here in just a second with Panda Pornstar, who I believe we spoke to last week. Second time caller. Hello, Panda Pornstar. Welcome back. Hello. Remind me where you called from last week. Uh, from SoCal. That's so right. He was the uh, bashful TSM fan. Yes, if I remember. yes, the bashful TSM fan. Well, yeah. either way, uh, Panda Pornstar talking about best of ones. What do you think of the change? Um, overall, I do think it's better because. A lot of my friends in my friend group, they had like a really tough time watching the best of three format. So I hope this could like bring them back into it because I was like the only person that tried to watch every game. And it is a time commitment. And I can understand why like people may be skeptical of this. But I don't think the best of three format made any that much better. Yeah, I... uh, in terms of like skill level, right? Yeah. Well, first off, yeah, I'm curious, Mark, do you think about this? Because. Uh, I think it was Fionn earlier who was tweeting about how they fe he felt like best of threes were a good chance for North America to improve, and I pointed out that like it doesn't feel like they've improved so far for us. So I'm I'm just kind of curious on your take on it. Do you think that it was helping? I I think it was helping. I but I don't think it was like this. Oh my God, we're suddenly really good. 
I, I think what was what was better was like a larger commitment to infrastructure, teams taking it more seriously, like TSM summer split where they like super try hard, it almost went like full Korean schedule helped. I think like the behind the scenes stuff will be much more important than like we got to play you know, an extra twenty games during the regular season. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I think your practice is more important. So Pan and Pornstar, you said something about Europe as well. Well, I, I'm actually really curious how this affects the EU League because NA is going to be franchise next split. We still don't know what exactly is going on with EU. Do you think they're also going to go back to best of ones? I actually have no idea. That is a very good question. Uh, yeah, Europe's been pretty quiet on it. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised because they haven't given too much away. But if you're having, you know, what is it, eight leagues? Yeah. Or four, four, four leagues with eight teams in them or six teams in them. That's so many games for that region. And I don't think anyone's going to even attempt to watch all the teams. They'll probably just watch the best ones and maybe their region or something. So I would assume that it would be best of ones most likely. Yeah. And not to mention the fact, I mean, you were talking about how it felt like this didn't really help. The format change to best of three didn't really help uh, NA that much. I think what might help NA and sort of offset this is that Europe is changing and going to this crazy thing. They're not going to be competitive anymore. So oh have to worry. It's one less opponent we have to worry about when we get to these international tournaments. Uh, are you saying we're going to like have four spots for like planes or something? Or? Wait, no, knows? he's just so saying that EU's going to bomb out. Yeah. And we'll, have, we'll be easier oh. road. Every tournament, yes. Hey, oh, uh, one last question, Panda Porn Star. Well, I, I have, have one too. if Travis hits, doesn't yeah, hit yeah. it. My my real quick one was you said your friends had a hard time watching best of three. So did they stop watching uh, the the NALCS entirely? And if so, what what was sort of their reasoning? Um, it was just like there's too much games, and they really didn't like the double stream. They really just prefer like coming home, turning on Riot Games, and whatever's on. Like that's what they're watching, you know. It's right. Much easier for them, but so- and. I do like uh, all of them would still like watch their favorite teams. Like, and I, I know they'd all always like watch the TSM games, but like they they can't be bothered to watch like Envy versus Echo Fox. Like, so about that, if did did the fact that they were watching less make them less interested because they no longer knew what was going on with those other teams? So it was like, yeah, we'll watch the TSM games, and there's a dual stream, and that's annoying. Um, but yeah, they, they feel like less invested in the league because they just knew less about it because they watched fewer other teams. Yes, I'm. What do you call it? Recently, they they like asked me. They're like, "Why are ADCs like buying a, what's it called, like relic shield at the beginning of the game?" They're like, "What is this?" I'm like, I had to explain to them. Like, "Oh, that's so stupid." And like, they really didn't like how like much the, like the game is changing. I guess. But I think if they were like still interested in league, they'd be like for it. But they're just not. So. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much, Panda Porn Star. I'm I'm wondering if there's anybody in the chat who wants to defend. Uh, best of threes and you know stick around and, and chat about that um i don't know looking for those people right now mark looks like you might have another caller lined up yeah this guy uh, sounds like he might have a, a crazy idea Thanks. can i get Oop. Oop. goodbye panda porn star all right uh, i can bring him back if you wanted no no, no. it's okay he <laughs> had his time in the spotlight he's had more time than anybody else yeah uh, all right I'll, you want to go, you wanna go chat with this person uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in to Hotline League. We're chatting about best ones, best three, the NALCS format. We'll be talking about something different soon, I am sure. Uh, but let's go ahead. And uh, Westrook, welcome to the show. Where are you calling from? Hello. I'm calling from Corvallis, Oregon. Okay. Corvallis, Oregon. Well, That's another, uh, West Oregon Coast, another West Coast city, West Coast mm-hmm. person. Uh, and what is your take on this whole best of one, best of three thing? Okay, so my take, my idea is more about the viewership aspect, right? Um, and the viewership for the LCS matches, especially in best of three, varies up and down, especially with the the teams that are playing. Um, and I know that no one really wants to watch a best of three or any kind of extended match between like really bottom of the table teams like Echo Fox, TL, stuff like that. But people are really interested in like COG, C9, TSM. Yeah. So my idea is that every single week, that if a top five team plays another top five team, then that match turns into a best of three. That way, you get a lot of viewership exactly where you want it, right? Because people are going to stick around for the top teams playing each other for all yeah. three games. What I do you think guess? that there'd be a lot of logistical problems with that because you 
like the top five, for instance, sometimes you have ties, especially mm-hmm. at the beginning of a split where like uh, you might have a, like four teams tied for third place. And so then kind of how do you de- yeah. decide like what is a, a top five team or not? Okay. Yeah, so the, the start of the split would be really hard because obviously teams are really going up and down. But I would, you know how um, sometimes the schedule is based on previous splits results. For example, TSM, C9 playing each other at the start. Yeah. So why not do something like that, where the the teams that did well last playoffs are the ones that get best threes at the start, and then as the league sort of sorts itself out, if Phoenix won or FlyQuest really really start uh, getting up there, then they get a best of three. Yeah, I think part of the thing is is that you often have so much turnover and change, especially between summer and spring split, where you don't mm-hmm. know like the top team from the previous split might be the worst team, and and even in this one, we're probably going to see different teams coming in with all new mm-hmm. rosters because of the the, form, the the changes. So I think it's kind of hard to seed that system there. Um, I mean, there's, there's like a whole bunch of saying. other concerns too. Like you're just rewarding the top teams, right? So if the argument that some people are making has any validity to it, that more games on stage is good, which is one of the concerns mm-hmm. people have right now, if you move to your system, you're basically rewarding the good teams for being yeah. good and giving them more opportunities to get better. Yeah, it's not it's not a fair system, uh, particularly for a system for the players and the teams, but it is what I can think of as the most optimal viewership experience for for someone like me. All right. So uh, what it if, obviously has a lot of flaws. If we are just going for optimal viewership, what if mm-hmm. instead of best of three, uh, people still play best of threes, but instead the first game is League of Legends, the second game is just a wrestling match between the two two captains. And then the third game, if it goes to a third, then you go back to League of Legends. Oh, I was going to say a rap battle, but you're right. Yeah, rap battle mm-hmm. would be good. But I mean, uh, I think that's a more optimal viewership thing, right? I, I mean, mean the, and I, I, go ahead, Mark. I was going to say, it's also terrible. Like, so we went over the competitive side about how, if there's any validity to that. What, I mean, like for branding for teams, no team would ever sign up for this system. Like, that's true. Why, why would a team be like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm Echo Fox. I've never been good. Um, and I'm trying to get fans, but here I'll play less games and have less screen time, significantly. Yeah. If if you're gonna do that system, you may as well just cut out half the teams that you don't care about because that's basically what you're saying. Keep six teams and just run best of threes with them, single stream. Which right, but half the cool. teams in the league, uh, no one really cares about anyways. Like uh, right, but the point is goes. to make the point is to make an ecosystem where you like every team does have some fans. I That's suppose so, but um, the thing about League of Legends, and especially the fan bases in League of Legends, is you don't have like teams assigned to cities. So you can't just be, oh, I'm for this team because I'm from that city. There's not really a reason why you would be a fan of like Echo Fox over TSM or C9. Minus, minus Rick Fox or Froggen. Min- minus, see, those or- are very small things. But the, the, the top-seeded teams, the, the teams that have been here from the start, have the fan base, they have the merchandise, they have the personalities, they have the success. People don't have to be sad like Team Liquid fans. They can, they, there's not really a reason to be a fan of a bottom-tier team like FlyQuest. I think, because, but I think that's something that Riot probably wants to solve, right? Like you don't want to. Right, end up if you're in a trying situation. to grow, you're not trying to pigeonhole yourself into six. Okay, teams. that's the only teams you'll ever have fans of. You want to grow as an esport. Because to Mark's point, like at that point in time, if you if you are decide if you're going to start making decisions, assuming that people aren't going to care about the bottom teams, mm-hmm. then you probably do just switch to like a six team league, because who cares about the bottom four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I was just you, thinking about it. Thank yeah, you, Westbrook, okay. for your time on the show. I think we're going to be talking to uh, somebody who wants to defend best of threes here in a second. Um, Mark, if you want to go chat with him. Again, thank you, Westbrook, for the call-in. And uh, if you're just tuning in, this is a call-in show. Talk to fans. To currently talking about best ones, best of threes. Well, hello, Ido. Welcome to the show. Yo, what's up? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Chicago, Illinois, home of the servers, home of 15 ping. Okay, there you go. You already you enjoy your of, privilege. Yeah. That already means my opinion's better than everyone else's because yeah. I have well, 15 certainly ping. You can convey it faster. Maybe let's put it that way. Oh, all right. Yeah. Ido, uh, what is your take on the best of three, best of one situation? So, as for best of three, I think that it's just healthier for the league because, in general, a lot of the picks that we see coming out. I see, you know, I think of specifically Westdoor. I watch a lot of LMS. And Westdoor, 
He's known for his Fizz, he's known for his TF. And those are champions that can be kind of pinched in a best of one. But if you put it into best of three, you know, you can't really pinch them as easily. And he's going to bring out other things. He's going to bring out, I don't know, like Azir, something that he's not as bad at. Westor isn't exactly the uh, the star mid laner he used to be. But um, he's definitely an example for why best of ones probably aren't so healthy for at least the meta and diversity. I feel uh, like you uh, just wanted to talk about Westor, and you've now figured out a way to make this this question a conversation uh, about Westor. You're Taiwan like, but has anybody one. seen Westor, though? Yeah, no, West, Westor is a uh, for shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I will say I do like the point that you're bringing up, less so about Westor, more about just subs generally. I don't know if it'll be worse for the meta because I feel like maybe you do see less uh, adaptation uh, or just like generally weird picks because every game you're just trying to go for your most optimal draft. I'm not sure how much I buy into that because I don't. I feel like what is played is more often defined by the meta and like what's viable than than that. Um, but I do think it is a great point for subs. And if we're if you know they're trying to push this idea of a ten man roster an academy team and people can move up and down. If you're only playing best of ones, it's really hard to put someone in for a game, lose, and then say, "All right, well, let's swap back to our main guy." And we you know we gave this guy some experience. I do think it's a great point about subs in general. Right, and I think that. Subs are going to probably be the biggest dynamic that's impacted by either best of one, best of three. Um, you look at a player like Yihan from RNG, like that guy will never get any playing time unless MLXG like really screws up in a best of three and they really just need like a strategy change. So junglers, top laners, mid laners specifically, not really ADC, but uh, those players are super impactful for best of threes because you can just change out the parts that aren't really working in your strategy and your in-game shot calling. And that will just change the entire flow of the game for a best of three. Do you not think that there will be opportunities to use sub players in lower risk games? Whenever you're like the first place team and you're ahead by a couple games and you're playing That's against like a, a bottom, play, bottom team. Week, week nine, probably. I mean, a lot of the time towards the end of the season, there's a battle for that playoff buy. And it's it, there's maybe one team who can maybe take advantage of the fact that they're safe. A, a split, that's a lot lower than, like, think about how many subs we saw from Echo Fox and Dignitas and, like, all these things, and you're potentially saying that you're going to see so many less all of a sudden. I, I do think it's a good, good point about the sub situation. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's exactly healthy for the diversity of teams, and we spent maybe the past year, year and a half to cultivate six-man rosters, this rotating uh, roster that SKT really implemented first more than anyone and made it work in best of ones, which was something that maybe is an argument for best of ones if we're talking about six-man. But as for every other team, you don't really see them saying, all right, let's just put in this player for one game, see how it works. Because genuinely, generally, if you have you know, a sub-jungler, one is going to be better than the other. You're not going to pick up two great junglers and take up roster space like that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, think... Look, I do think that... I suspect you guys will be surprised because I think we will still see subs. Because I think that, you know, SKT was doing it before. Uh, and, sure, they are very good. But I think nobody else is really doing it because they weren't as forward-thinking and, you know, as stable. One question, by the way... Will we see subs if viewership, viewership keeps dropping and teams can't afford to pay them? That is, that's an interesting thought. Can yeah, I one, mean, Mark? yeah, yeah you, that's, you that's go ahead, Mark. One. You want to talk about that one then? I'm not too versed in, a, I guess, like cap space, you could say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a, a huge concern. Every team that's coming in right now has a ton of money, and <laughs> uh, subs are probably going to be relatively cheap on, on the academy teams. Uh I mean, obviously, the point Travis is making here is less about the actual money and more like long term if the league's viewership keeps going down. That's a much bigger concern than, ah, oh, man, they couldn't swap between all tech and this guy. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, on that note, you know, I was thinking the other day that I'm going to keep getting flamed because I watch LPL, I guess. But Nami you watch North is, America ever? Because we're talking I about do, NLCS I definitely format do, yeah. change. And so far, you've referenced every other region. <laughs> I mean, by every other region. 
Taiwan and China and Korea and Korea. Yeah. No EU yet. That, that, We're not there I yet. I said regions. No reason to. Yeah. No reason. Yeah. Who right. who cares about uh, best of two, right? So what? Sorry, did you have a final thought here? Yeah. So just on that note, of, you know, money impacting six men, a player like Ame, who's I would think is a super cheap six man to pick up. He hasn't been on a team for a year. Still insanely strong mechanical player. Got tons of experience. And if you can't pick up players like that for cheap anymore, then I think it's going to chokehold a lot of the diversity. Yeah. Well, sorry to burst that bubble, but most popular players who disappear do it because they're making more money streaming and you usually can't pick them up for cheap. I'm sure some would love to grab I'm a cutie pie. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think you can buy out his 5 million contract yeah, from Twitch. You see, there is. Uh, so thank you so much, Ido. Mark, uh, it is time for us to do a bit of a break. Also, I see you've got two people queued up. Are they to talk about best of ones and best of threes? Because I do think maybe maybe we take these two last calls and then we switch gears a little bit. Sure, let's switch to more talking about worlds uh, after these two guys. Yeah, we'll do the uh, break well, you, after I that. You then. said you want to talk about playing stage, so I think that that'll be interesting. So why don't we do this? We'll we'll talk to these two guys. We'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll talk about worlds. Sounds good. Okay, so go do the check on these guys. Uh, while he's in the other channel, I want to thank all the people who have subbed uh, during the show. We've got uh, Zodiac Sheep resub, Consulate sixty four sub, D Park ninety five subbed, Elder Real sub, Liquid Crush subbed. Uh, and that he, that was two months. Thank you for Liquid Crush for resubbing. Uh, and QT Stevens. Q, Q Stevens has subbed. Either way, thanks so much. We've got Bard's Threshlight. Great name. The, thanks. In the room. <laughs> Great name. Uh, where are you calling from, Bard's Threshlight? Uh, I'm calling from Cumming, Georgia. It's just outside Atlanta. Yeah, also, a great name. What is on your mind? Yeah. Is, it, is that a real place? I don't actually, I'm not even going to ask. Either way. Yeah. Uh, we what, used to have coming police on our cop cars. It was great. That's great. What <laughs> is your question uh, or topic for the, the discussion here? So I think best of ones overall, instead of playing a best of three, is better for viewership and the players. They don't, it's kind of better for them. But through a season with best of threes, you get if. For instance, if you win a game of a best of three, but you lose the other two, you still have that game in a tiebreaker sense towards the end of the season, which is huge. Since every other tiebreaker, like if you are winning for 90% of a game and still lose that game in a best of one, it still counts as a loss. And you have nothing really to show for it because we don't have a very good secondary tiebreaker system. Game time. Blah. I, I mean, I'm but even blah. then. I was being sarcastic. Yeah, I know. But uh, And then the other thing is, with every other sport, there's a home and home, typically. Like, home, home. It's even. The sport doesn't change. But with League of Legends, the meta shifts. And that can almost take away uh, like that home and home advantage, which is something I think they need to account for. Yeah. So and best of three kind of does a little bit, since you can get that tiebreaker. A, a little bit. I mean, the, the point still stands either way, though. If you're in a meta where red side's better and you get your double red side series on that meta, the, the point still stands. You're getting two of the better games. Whereas now, yeah, you might get the one game, but you'll get your own blue game later. So no matter what, you're getting balanced games, and the meta shifts will influence that either way. So for me, that's a bit of a non-point. And the tiebreaker situation, while I agree it sucks and something best of three does do better, it is, for me, a little lower down on the totem pole than what we're trying to like what you know are the problems facing the league yeah yeah i mean i'm a fan of best ones because viewership is going to be overall improved because i don't watch nearly as much as i used to as when it was on best of ones yeah and i think that's i think it's good to bring up the fact that ties are a little weirder now and it always feels bad when they do the game game time tie break or or something like that um I would just love to see them play a game but then you know who gets the blue side who gets the red side that kind of stuff does come up then and I think those are some good points, but at the end of the day, if the problem is people like you are no longer watching as much, that that's what they got to fix. Yep. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Bard's Threshlight from Cummings, Georgia. Uh, one last person. We've got uh, Prim Primari here joining up in just a second. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Chrono MK for the uh, sub. How's it going, Primari? Where are you calling from? Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Has it, is it cooled down out there yet, or is it still boiling? 
it's cooler. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's low, great. So only like 90 low degrees 90s. instead of 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, either way, uh, as you're as you're sweating here, asking the question, what is your your take on all this? Um, so my perspective is from being a position coach for the NALCS, COG to be specific. Okay. Um, and from Are my you point of view, currently a position coach for them, or when were you a position coach for them? Last split. Last split. Okay. Which which position? Primary. Support. Support. Okay. All right. So best of ones. Um, I think a lot of people have been pointing out that it's been constantly competitive integrity kind of um standpoint but the the teams get a lot of practice in scrims um and i think scrims are going to be a lot more important now to be able to track trends and who's playing what and what's op the things in best of threes is that you know the first game you know you've been trying something in scrims all week you can test it out on the first game and then it just like falls flat but you still have two games to play your you know back to meta um or back to, like comfort picks whereas having this option where it's the best of one, you got to come out strong every time. So I think it will actually be more competitive in that sense. I think a lot of two ones, um, TSM, for example, um, where they lose the first game and they pick it up right away because they, cause then they lose if they, if they don't. So I think you'll see less of that. I think you'll see a lot more, um, you know, priority on that initial game and they're going to practice for it. So the, the meta might be a little more stale in my opinion, but I think so that might hurt viewership in that sense. But I think overall, uh, being able to watch all the NALCS games, because even though it's my job to track games, you know, LCK, LPL, uh, not too much time for Europe, but, like, I can't watch all the NALCS games um, unless they're, like, within our next two weeks of schedule. Yeah. So I, I like this point, and to summarize people, it's basically uh, scrims are still, like, the most important thing for improving, less about stage experience. What you are losing is maybe some experimentation on stage, um, but at the end of the day, it means people will be trying harder in all their games because every single one is supposed to be a win. Yeah. Exactly. And I, yeah, uh, I so, do like that a lot. I didn't even really think about that too much, and so I'm glad you raised the point that, like, there's a good chance that... So people, I think whenever people are talking about competitive integrity, they talk a lot about... Um, and first off, I think they're using that incorrectly. It's more around rule set or whatever. But whenever they're talking about maybe yeah. about competitive strength, they mean more like best of threes are better for North America when we get to the international stage, because we'll have had more games on stage in practice, there's an interesting situation here where perhaps the games on stage, the ones that we see, will all be way more intense and way higher caliber because people won't be doing any weird shit in the first game. They will want to try hard because everything is on that one game. So it's a good point, uh, Primary, and thank you so much for calling in. Uh, good to uh, it's good to have you on, and uh, hope... Arizona cools off even more soon. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I hope CLG does better next split. Yeah. Boom, I kicked him out right after I said that. Boom, there you go. <laughs> All right, so uh, before uh, we get into the break, Mark, do you want to queue up uh, maybe the next question so that we can have people join the chat, think about questions, think about t- discussion topics? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So when we come back from break, we're going to be shifting our focus to a little bit more about worlds and specifically the playing stage. It wrapped up late last night, early this morning, technically, and... Um, I've been talking to a lot of people about it. I've seen posts on Reddit, on Twitter, talked to some NA casters, uh, talked to some European casters, everyone who was at at the uh, LCS, uh, about how it felt to watch as a viewer. Uh, Did it ruin some of the hype? Did you like it more? Those kinds of the things I want to ask people. If you're from a minor region, I definitely want to hear what you have to say because you're, you know, how was this different for you than the international wild card qualifiers, things like that. So that is what we'll be talking about. Cool. And here we are now on the break. Okay, we're on break. Uh, So, everyone, Hotline League is brought to you by viewers like you who can sub to this channel for half off uh, right now. They extended it into October, but I don't know when we're going to get to another one of these. Hopefully, whenever I'm in China next week after the groups, Mark and I will have to figure it out. But we're going to keep trying to do this. But uh, if you want to sub, you can do so. We give you a shout out on the show. And I do want to thank everybody who has subbed so far on the show really appreciate it you can also uh donate directly travisgafford.com slash support which i'm putting into the uh twitch chat and if you're watching the vod it'll be uh, in the youtube description so thank you very much i'm uh, mark and i are getting korean barbecue after this and uh mark uh, you guys don't know this 
but Mark makes me pay for every one of his meals whenever we we eat together. Um, so if you want to help me cover Mark's Korean barbecue tab after the show, any support right now would be very appreciated. Also, I didn't even know where I was going. I was just volunteered for Korean barbecue, yeah. I guess. Wait, I told you the restaurant name. You didn't know it? Did you? Yeah. Um, also, somebody just messaged me about Korean barbecue because we're being joined by somebody else. Uh, Ovi, actually. Uh, uh-huh. Either way, also want to give a shout out to, they, they're not an official sponsor of the show, but listen, we're all gamers, all right? We all like watching these worlds is going to have a lot of games going. You're going to want to watch them. You just want to be comfortable. You want to be comfortable, you know, whether you're a man or a woman while you're watching the stuff, while you're playing League of Legends. And let me tell you, there is nothing more comfortable than me undies. Uh, they have fantastic underwear. They now have uh, bralettes for the, the ladies. They've got socks. They've got all sorts of great things. And by the way, not only are these fantastically comfortable, you could get 20% off your first order, meandies.com slash Travis Gafford. It's amazing, guys. you got to check this stuff out. Uh, they, they support eSports. They're great. L.A. company, so comfortable. Please, I encourage you to check it out. And then uh, finally, I told a friend that I'd promote this on the show. Uh, if I could find it. Oh, where God. Is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I think it's this. Yes. Um, Walking is doing a giveaway. They're sending you to Worlds. If you, want, if you win the grand prize, you get a fully covered trip to Beijing, China to attend the 2017 LO World Championship final. By the way, even if you're like, I don't want to go to China, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see the, the finals between TSM and SKT uh, because you're an SKT fan and you, you don't want to see the 3 uh, They are also giving away $1,000 in RP, uh, mice, keyboards, all sorts of great stuff. So uh, this is uh, it's just bit.loi slash lawkingworlds. I'm sure you can go find it over on their Twitter and all that if you want to as well. Simple, simple way to sign up. And not too many people have signed up yet, so I think your chances are pretty good as they stand. Either way, we are back now. Hotline League. Mark, we're talking about Worlds, specifically plans. And your question is, how was the viewership experience, right? Yep. How did you feel? I want everyone's perspective. Minor regions, minor regions, minor, may, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. You like it. So you let's like talk it. a little, you and me, we can talk a little bit about it. So my, my take was... Uh, I had, I mean, I think I represent a standard in a fan in that I don't have as much Good crazy opinion. enthusiasm for the other regions outside of international tournaments. Plans, obviously, an international tournament, but uh, for me, it was just hard because I felt like, like Worlds to me doesn't really feel like it starts until groups, and it was hard to care about the, the event whenever I knew that like the vast majority of these teams were not going to be getting into groups. So, you know, I obviously cared mostly about Cloud9's games because I wanted to see if they were going to make it and all that kind of stuff. But it felt like they were almost certainly going to. So, I don't know. That's kind of my take on plans. Like, it, they were fun to have. But, like, for me, world starts at groups. So, two questions for you then. One, did you like seeing C9 kind of prove that, like, yeah, I should be at Worlds, even if, you know, I'm the third seed from North America. I shit on these other regions. And two, do you feel like then it was a mistake on Riot to kind of brand it as the start of Worlds? Yeah. So one, uh, I didn't. I wouldn't say I cared too much. In fact, I would have it on like I'd have it on my main screen, and then it would get moved to my second screen. And then once I was like, this game is over, I'd be like just tuning it out and doing something else. Um, so I, I don't think that that was particularly valuable to me. It wasn't like, oh yeah, Cloud 9s got to prove it because again, like. Like, it would have been, it, it actually would have been more interesting to me if Cloud9 hadn't made it, uh, which obviously is not something I would like because three and eight teams, that feels good as an, in a content creator. But uh, it's hard to feel like them making it was like something I could really celebrate or whatever because it was so obvious. Yeah. And then the second thing is, yeah, we talked about this before with MSI. Um, you know, I feel like MSI was way too long and confusing because there's like plans starting and people were messaging me. We talked about this on. League Weekly, I think, whenever we were at uh, doing a show for Yahoo. Um, and again, like, yeah, Worlds is so long, you don't need to make it even longer by branding planes as Worlds. Maybe it's easier to sell to sponsors, and so that's kind of nice. From a viewership perspective, there might be business reasons to do it. But why don't you just call these, like, the international Worlds qualifiers or something? You know? So one of the reasons for for minor region teams that I, I heard being brought up was the fact that uh it's 
nice to be included as a part of group of like worlds because right. yeah, when you're, you're, you're when you're in the international wild card qualifier it doesn't receive the hype of worlds you don't get the respect of going to worlds yeah. and now they could say i attended worlds just like c9 attended worlds and those yeah kinds of things. yeah that might be fair i don't know it's just hard i think if that's the case then i mean i don't know how you would do this but like figuring out how to trim down another part of worlds because it's just like it is so long you know we're going from the end of september to the beginning and, of november it's hard to think of too many other like culminating sporting events that go this long that happen. Yeah, and I, I have a, a hot take about about the whole do they deserve sure. that kind of nod. That I'll, I'll give later, but first I don't want to taint the discussion. We'll yeah. grab the first guest speaker, sure. Colin. Uh, so go, if you want to go grab people, uh, we've got some people that are going to chat to us about this. If you're tuning in for the first time, it's Colin show. We've got, uh, if you want to join and chat with us, here's the Discord info up on the screen and it looks like we got chrono who is i believe a new sub to the channel welcome to the show chrono hello how are you guys doing pretty good where are you calling from chrono calling from the good old midwest madison wisconsin madison wisconsin okay and uh and what is your topic or what's your take on world's plans all right yeah so for plans in general i was kind of mainly looking at the uh Kind of two things. One, from a North American viewer's perspective, I think a lot of people were saying, you know, through Reddit and through a bunch of other channels that, yeah, the viewing time sucked for us. And it, it makes sense that the viewing time had to suck. It's obviously an event held in China. They're trying to get as many viewers as possible out of the most viewing region, China. Um, so it's, I, I don't blame China for, right, sorry, for making the decision they made uh, in having the tournament when it was. Okay, so I want to make sure that just right now we squash this whole time zone thing. If anyone tries to call in and talk to me about the time zone, I'm instantly throwing you out of here. Let's go. We're getting it out of the way first. I don't care. It's in China, so it should be for the Chinese audience. The same way it was in North America, it was for North American audience. And yes, you try and make the times work. It was very nice that C9 started their games at 8 p.m. PST. That's basically as good as you could hope for. Um, but you need to understand that it, it, there's people all over the world who want to watch. So, you know, I understand you didn't enjoy that as a North American fan. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking about the the rest of the playing stage. So, oh, no, I, I was I was totally agreeing with you. I said that. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Other, I know, I know yeah, you were. Mark I, was, is I just want to get it out of the way. Potential other, okay. other folks. Definitely, so, Chrono, yeah. did so, you, besides obviously the time zone issues, uh, what did you think of playing? Did you get a chance to watch it? And, you know, what did, was this interesting, compelling to you? Did it feel like it was part of Worlds? Yeah, so I watched pretty much the entire thing. Uh, I'm in Central Time, so that means I was staying until up like five a.m., which was not a good decision. But yeah. watch the watch the games, anyways. Um, I think that the level of competition between all the teams was actually really, really good. I think that with only a couple exceptions, like you know, some crazy blowouts between C9 and um, some of the teams they were facing, a lot of the games were really fun to watch. And uh, just watching the games in general, even compared to last Worlds, like there was that statistic quoted on Reddit, you know, 61 picks in Rift Rivals compared to 57 of the entirety of last Worlds. And you can say, you can we can debate whether that's because the 10 ban system, or sorry, 5 ban versus 3 ban system, or if that's just a better and different meta. Like, it's a bunch of different things. Overall, I think that this has been a really good viewing experience between just the games themselves. So you're obviously someone who enjoys watching League. You had a lot of fun watching this event. Where would you put yourself on like the hardcore to casual fan spectrum? Oh, I'm like a if it's one out of ten, I'm like a nine or a ten. I've done coaching all over the place kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I assume if you're staying up till five, that's uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. So from I guess like taking a straw man from the casual perspective, like if I'm a casual NA fan and ignoring the fact that these games are at five a.m., let's say I'm watching on you know lol event vods reddit or some other way of watching the games afterward um i think that the the casting the way the cast was done was very professional almost identical to you know how they done the full world's experience before uh they you know have they had the analysis they had interviews all over the place it was just really well done overall and i think that the fact that they can have this amount of professional casting and analysis for a month and a half is really good yeah. and yeah very good well, thank All you right, so cool. thanks. Thanks so much, Chrono, for calling in. Uh, good take, good take. Yep, we've got uh, two fan. more people Enjoyed queued it. up. If you want to go investigate that, Mark, uh, and I want to say thank you to Scientia Fay for subbing, and we'll put for subbing and Volks, lol for subbing as well. 
to the stream. Always nice to get the support of the audience. And uh, by the way, I noticed that we lost one person, Mark. Did yeah, I don't know what happened. I, I I joined and he just left. Oh, well, okay. I thought it they were talking weird. in the waiting room, and one of the one of the things that he was going to say, the other guy said, so he kind of got it ah, stolen okay. from him a little okay. bit. Well, either way, Lucas, thank you for joining the broadcast. Uh, where are you calling from, Lucas? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. Uh, well, I know it's a it's a crazy place to be right now. But either way, uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your take on the world's plans? So, for me, I was not the one staying up to watch it. I watched all the VODs afterwards, after I was back from my classes. And I thought with it being in a similar style, like groups, best of ones, it gave the wildcard teams a chance. And watching games... Well, I say wildcard regions. Watching the minor regions go up against each other, I thought was really exciting. A lot of the picks that they do are different uh, because of their play styles. It's raw skill. They carry champs, especially in the top lane. You see Camille and Jax being picked, and they just run at each other. I really enjoyed that, but as far as watching the major regions, Fnatic and WE and C9 play, I didn't really like it. Okay. Uh, it felt like a waste of time, some of the games, where it was like, no matter how badly they cheese you in the early game or anything, you're they're just going to lose anyway, yeah. because they don't know how to close out games at all. Yeah. So like, you, Their you, raw skill, like you could see some of the ADs all from the other regions were really good, but other than that, there was no way they could Did you like, used to just watch, close out games. Did you ever watch the old uh, you know, wild card tournaments? I did not. Okay. Uh, so, and do you think that you did? You, because it seems like you were really interested in watching the wildcard teams, or the formerly known as the the teams formerly known as the wildcard regions play each other. Uh, and do you think that that's just you just didn't get exposed to it before? But because this was Worlds, you were able to watch them. Yeah, I liked um, having all the casters, like Captain Flowers and stuff like that, being able to cast the games yeah. for the wildcard regions. I really enjoyed that. It's it was a lot more accessible to me rather than watching. The old tournaments they used to have to play in the world so yeah yeah very good so what uh another question i'd have would be so you said you didn't like watching cloud nine play because they stomped them but do you feel like if they weren't in there would you still want to watch it as much like the major region teams and then two do you feel like you would appreciate the individual skill of these players as much if they didn't play them because you know someone like white lotus we could watch him go off against you know, other minor region teams, but watching him perform well versus WE and C9 made it more impressive in some sense, right? Even though they ended up getting stomped a lot of the time. Yeah, I I can get behind that reasoning. I mean, I liked watching C9 absolutely smash teams because it just proved that they deserve to go through and be in Worlds as a third seed NA team. And it's reassurance for major regions that they do deserve to be there. So I can get behind that, and I think it is more impressive for these emerging re emerging re um, regions to go up against teams like WEC9 and Fnatic and have players pop off like they did. So yeah, I yeah, would so say maybe I agree it's with that. not about us; it's about these other regions, kind of like what Mark was suggesting earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, cool. thank you so much, Lucas. I uh, really appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, hope hope to hear from you in future shows. Uh, looks like we're going to have somebody else joining up in just a second. Uh, checking subs right now to see if there's anybody else I need to give a shout out to. Nope. Okay. Uh, Kalahea, how's it going? Hello. How are you? Where are you calling from? I'm from Argentina, actually, from South America. So here I am. Nice. Thank you first, for this First international place. caller for the show. First person, yeah. So, yeah. by the way, I, English is my no, it's not my, my native language, so I'm sorry if I sound like... Like Moggy, you know? No, you're speaking you, 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 English better than most of the pro players I know, so you're doing great. <laughs> okay. I'm amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So, so what's as, your take? as well, I think the the audience was was way bigger than than the older Wildcard tournament. So from a perspective of the exposure exposure, sorry, um I think the, the players and the teams were were happy to be included, you know, like yeah. like Mark said. Uh, earlier, uh, though I really think that is th there's no big point of doing this because you know what what's going to happen. 
So I, I, I love to see Kyle G playing, but it, it was kind of obvious that even if we, we managed to get to the to the second um, part of the competition, we're, we were going to lose against C9 or Team WE or Fenerbahce or, or whatever. So it, um, we, we, we were watching more like from the means and, and from the perspective of an underdog and waiting to see Lion or, or Fenerbahce or, or Kyle G going to, to the actual uh, worlds. Yeah. You know? I mean, so I, yeah, admittedly, like you said, there's a very slim chance that this was going to happen. But are you happy that it happened anyway, even even though you believe that like there it was maybe a little pointless? Yeah, absolutely. There, there this was there was no point at all in in making this a part of the of the actual world. Okay. So it was. But do you want them to I do it know. again next year if if you could? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I, I, I mean, really is, like to see playing against fanatics. So. You feel? Uh, I mean, you feel the same way as you know North American European fans whenever they watch Worlds. There's no point, you know. Like they're, they're not going <laughs> to win this thing, uh, but we'll all watch it anyway. And you know, it's fun. You're just experiencing the same thing we all experienced, but earlier on in the tournament. Well, you, you every every year you say the same thing, no? Like this is the year. Well, yeah. I I kind of feel the same. Yeah. I know this is the year, but of course it's not. You... I actually love this take that like what you don't understand is America, Fnatic, Europe, all these all these other major regions are really just minor regions that just don't get exposed till later by Korea. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but but then you, you you hear Korean players saying that um, EU teams or or NA teams are actually dangerous. That like, of course they're gonna win, but you can expect something from TSM, for example, or from G2. Of course, you're not expecting the same from from Fenerbahce or, or from Kaleje. But I I honestly think EU teams or NA teams can actually do something uh, against the big big players, yeah. uh, big teams. Sorry. I really feel so. Can you talk to me a little bit about what your viewing experience was? Like, did you, because um, you know we're sitting in our like North American home, like what, like oh yeah, plans or whatever. Was this like a pretty cool thing for the esports community in your area, or uh, did you just watch it at home, kind of the same way everybody else does? Well, the playing was at my two a.m. from two a.m. to okay. to seven a.m. So it was kind of difficult. Yeah. But I'm currently writing for article from for Riot for Riot in Latin America South. Okay. So I was kind of it was not like my job to say to yeah. watch it. But I I I I, I have fun from from time to time. Yeah. Uh, I I again I I really think there's a good chance from from every team to 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 play against the better the, the best teams yeah. you know so i really think KLG is going to be a, a better team this next uh, season that that was before playing against fanatic yeah. for example or young generation uh, the same with lion of course but lion has no teams at all to play against so right. it's going to be the same next year so, so what? the question oh, go ahead, i would have would be did you watch international wildcard qualifiers previously uh and did this no not at all and no, so no, you, no. did you tune in specifically because it was like, oh, well, now they're going to play Fnatic right away. And yeah, I exactly. Well, I, I watched the finals. I watched like Kyle Hare versus Isurus Gaming, which is which was the final mm -hmm. from Lion Mega South. But before that, it's, it's like, I mean, from my perspective, I kind of used to watch LCK and and North America. So it was like, <clears throat> I, I'm going to, to say something bad, but it was like watching tennis from from men men tennis to women <laughs> tennis it's not like one is better than the other but it was like two different um, velocities so it was like slow and sloppy and you know full of of oh, i don't know it's, it was it was very hard to see yeah. i, I understand what you're saying and i actually i actually love love this this opinion because i think it's something that north american fans want to like kind of feel like they're better then you know Latam South or whatever it is, and it's like, well, yeah, maybe a little bit, but exactly. in the grand scheme of things, you know. Another example will be like I, I'm a big Barcelona fan or Real Madrid fan because I watch a lot of, of international football, soccer, you know, soccer for you. But then I watch my league, my Argentina league, and I want to kill myself. In all, <laughs> of course, in a, in a very, in a, not in a real way, of yeah. course. Like, uh, yeah. But I, it's like two different velocities, and it get kind of boring and and it's awful to see. Really, yeah. it's very awful. What, uh... I'm, I'm watching Young Generation against Kaleje after seeing uh, Longsu Gaming against this SKT, and you say, "What the fuck is going on?" And then you <laughs> you finally understand why 
Latin America South and Latin America North, even even Brazil, are so far away from from the biggest regions. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be good. Okay. So the last question here, uh, before before we move on to the next caller, now that you know, the regions have been decided for who's going to the main main part of worlds. Who do you root for? Who I, who do I sorry? Who do you root for now from group stage on? <sighs> I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed because I I'm a big Gas fan <laughs> because oh, I love please. Sunday you know they, they have so I'm, uh, you're the guy I can I I'm that one there's I'm that one, one. In the, the one who, who likes the, I'm the one who likes every tweet you know yeah. uh, that's me okay. but uh, so I I'm not very very um, I don't like the the, the NA teams to this world so I'm I'm kind of chanting for Misfits yeah or Lounge yeah. you know okay I, I, and well, of course. I, Yes, sir. Sorry. One last question. Uh, so one of the things people were suggesting was do this format again where, um, you know, Fnatic, World Elite, C9, third seed from region still have to prove that they deserve their spot at Worlds by beating uh, the emerging <laughs> regions teams. But they were saying don't label well, it as the start of Worlds. Do you think it's important for you as like, you know, this emerging region viewer to label it as the start of Worlds? Or is it more important that you're just getting a chance at Fnatic? I think... Well, I, I also like rugby. I don't know if, if you know the sport, but I am a big fan of rugby. And uh, lately, there's a tournament called the the, the Three el, el país de ter, el, el torneo de tres regiones, which pardon the, the tres uh, nations, the Three Nation tournament, which plays against uh, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, and now they included they included Argentina. So, from of course, it's, Argentina is going to lose every match, but mm -hmm. since then the team was uh, start to play better. I think this is going to be better for the teams from now on. I mean, I'm going to see KLG, KLG or, or any Latin America South team get destroyed one and over, one and over to Fanario or, or whatever. But I think eventually they will going to get better. So I kind of expect him to, to watch it again. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much for the call. This was, I, I will say, I'm really happy you called in. It was like great... Twitch chat's favorite caller. Yeah, thus diff, far. Diff, oh. Very different Twitch take, for... I think, on some of this. So. I, I love chat. Can I, can I get a puck champ with an arm? <laughs> I'm sure I, always, we'll I always wanted to ask for some emoji. So... Yeah, I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll see a pop Hopefully, up Twitch chat spams for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That was, I mean, that was great. Really great that, to that, hear. That actually did change my perspective a fair amount. Yeah. I hadn't had a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with one of them. Yeah, <laughs> with one of them. Well, I'm an emerging region <laughs> yeah, fan. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, very good. All right, so uh, I, I think maybe we'll see. This could be our, maybe our last question from see on this topic, the and then maybe we just open it up to whatever. But uh, if you want to go check them out as the Twitch chat spams PogChamp, that's great. Love it. Uh, Zodiac Sheep here. Uh, Zodiac Sheep a two-month sub of the channel. Thank you very much for your support. Where are you calling from, Zodiac Sheep? Uh, most recently of New Mexico. New Mexico, New Mexico. Did we talk to you last week? Uh, yes, you did. We did. Okay, so our second second caller. Uh, Zodiac Sheep, what is your take on plans, and what did you think of it? So I want to start off by saying that as far as Team Allegiance goes, for plans specifically, I'm a total mercenary. I do not give a shit about any of the teams in the plans, not even Cloud9, even though I'm from NA. Okay. So when I'm watching this, I'm very impartial. I'm here for gameplay. I was in a hosted chat, so, you know, interacting with the chat, whatever. And because house sitting isn't a real job, but I still get paid for it, so I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I've got a lot of time to watch for Worlds. I watched Worlds. In and the, um, In the homes of strangers, apparently. Yes. Okay. And uh, I... One of the things I think was actually a big issue with Worlds, other than it being framed as Worlds and a lot of people disliking that aspect of it, was that Riot wants to bring in a lot of their newer casters and newer analysts and um, such onto the desk, right? Yeah, like they Mark want to Zimmerman. Give, yeah, like Mark Zimmerman. This guy. And um, they want to give Medic, Vedius, all of these guys time to cast international games, show experience, etc. But when you're looking at games that are of lower quality, in addition to having casting talent that is, frankly, of lesser quality than um, your A-listers, your Kobe, Deficio, Quickshot, Papa Smithy, yeah. it actually creates a sort of like 
feedback loop of problems where you've got a bad game and a caster that just isn't as quite as good to sort of elevate the level of the gameplay. And um, I think that was actually a big issue with the whole thing for me was that I was, even though I have all this time, even though I, I love worlds, I love watching professional league of legends, huge fan. I'm actually putting the video on mute some of the time. Yeah. Were any of them analyst desk segments? Um, sometimes because specifically get me out of here (laughs) specifically with the pauses and with some of the games there was just nothing for you guys to analyze even if you guys were in like best analysts in the entire world not just for league of legends but for everything like there's not a whole lot you can do with that oh look you know young generations got baron stolen twice like what do you get to say about that they suck at baron setups of course they do they're wild card team right so i mean i i completely understand not listening to pauses. I mean, there was that one time, you know, the lights went out at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. And like, I didn't sit there watching like, man, I can't wait to hear what Phil Simms has to say about the lights being off. You know, like <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. That's, that was, that was a bit much. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, I mean like that's, that's something I a hundred percent get. Um, and I do understand what the idea, cause this is what some other people were saying was labeling this as a start of worlds when it is a, you know, I think you have a good point, objectively inferior product. Um, in some regards, like the gameplay is worse. You know, there's no Korean teams. You don't have, as as you say yourself, you know, the A tier casters, Kobe, Jat, Fischio, Papa Smithy, whoever you want to say is your favorite. You know, you generally don't have all those guys. Um, and in some way, the broadcast team is getting a shot at Worlds the same way some of these minor region teams are getting a shot at Worlds. Yeah, and I think that's great for the casters, right? This is an awesome opportunity for Medic. Like, a year ago, he was casting Challenger Series, right? In Europe, which is, you know, Europe, and um, now he's getting to cast a portion of Worlds. Uh, And that's great for him. That's a great opportunity. It's going to give him a lot of experience. He's going to be better for it. But as a viewer, and specifically um, one of the people I was watching Worlds with, he's never watched Worlds before, never watched uh, Professional League of Legends too much, and... He's going to ha- he's like kind of suffering through this part and he's like should I even watch groups is this going to be like this for groups and we have to assure him yeah we're going to have better casts we're going to have better games they're going to be closer they're going to be more exciting but for a lot of these first time viewers or for people that were already you know kind of pussyfooting around committing to watching worlds anyways especially with um how inconvenient it can be for a, a North American to watch it which I know you already discussed that but whatever um it's it can actually turn people off of watching the main stage. Yeah, and I think uh, as much as I know, some people probably are you know like, oh, this is an elitist viewpoint or whatever it is. I do think there is a very valid argument to have that like when it's world's time, the most important thing is putting out the best possible product. You have regional play if you want to watch your region or hear your regional casters, and and I think it, it is as much as some people might not agree a fair argument to say that the world's product should be the premium premium of of what League of Legends has to offer. Yeah, that's a that's a fair point as well. See, I, I'm so torn. I'm so torn on this because yeah, I like, I, I like the oh, the guy the caller before that's yeah. such a good point. I, I feel like this is a fair point. Yeah. Like, you don't want to burn people or turn people away from Worlds, especially the casual fans. They're like, Worlds is on. What is playing? So, why is... Yeah, you get, you get all this stuff. Like, I, I mean, like, the people who are calling in right now will absolutely be biased in favor of more games and more everything because, I mean, you guys are the hardcore fans. Everyone's watching two idiots sit in their rooms talk about League of Legends. So, of course, you guys love Where's the Where's the second one? Talking about Zodiac Sheep. Oh, okay. Uh, okay thank you. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, like you have to think about the viewers who aren't going to call on this show, the people who click in from the client yeah. who, who don't follow esports, and they click in and they they see this other stuff going on, and they're like, "I see that my bronze five games," and they close out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say, um, I've been pretty negative towards the play-in stage. I think Lion deserved to go to Worlds. I think this is a good opportunity for a lot of these team, these wild card teams, and um, I'm sad to see that Lion doesn't want to be. There isn't going to be able to get to the main group stages because of kind of bad draws. Maybe they could have made it against uh, 1907 Facebook, whatever. But um, I think I think I would appreciate keeping in the play in stage, but really trimming the fat down. I think C9, Fnatic, WE, all they have to do is play the best of five, and um, that that would be my start. Just try to trim down the games, make it like four days instead of six, something along those lines to really 
cut the fat about this part. So you still get international teams coming to Worlds. You still have casters getting experience on the world stage, getting to flex and show their talents for people that haven't been exposed to them so far. And um, But you don't have to suffer through it. And I, I Suffer is a harsh word, but it does really feel like really poor quality games sometimes. Watching Gambit versus anyone, watching Rampage versus anyone, watching Vettius predict Rampage winning against anyone. Those are all <laughs> bad moments. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Right, well, uh, I think you. we've got to let him go before he hurts anyone's yeah, feelings. Yeah, thank but... you, Zodiac Sheep. Uh, Thanks a lot points. for having me on. Yeah. Well, I think we've wrapped up uh, Mark's conversation on plans. Uh, Mark, well, I'll get you your opinion here, but maybe we should just say, if you are in the Discord chat, put the info back up. Maybe we just open the call, the lines up for the next uh, 15 or so minutes as we're wrapping up the show. If you have something that is not related to anything we've talked about on the show today, feel free to put your question in your topic or discussion point we'll chat with you again you join the discord right there uh join the general chat and then uh go ahead and put your question in. we'll try and get you on the show uh well put i see is in in there i know he's a sub maybe we'll grab him uh when when's the dinner reservation it's at eight. Oh, okay so but it's i, like, I got a shower dude i haven't I, like yeah, I'm seeing seeing my hair looks right now my hair only looks this good because I didn't shower. And it's 15 more minutes. Can you do 15 more minutes? Yeah, 15 is fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, so um, either way, what is your take on all this stuff, Mark? Kind of wrapping it up now that you've talked to everybody. And... I, uh, I'm still torn because I started it with the, the more NA perspective, obviously, major region perspective. I talked to – I saw the Reddit threads, which are still mostly major regions. It's mostly NA and EU on there. And then I talked to some people in the office, some of the other casters, even ones who aren't working right now and just watching, like, some of the other LCS guys who are waiting for Worlds to start. And they all had relatively similar views. We are like, yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, I like that, you know, the teams kind of have to prove themselves. But it still feels, like, hard to, like, appreciate as truly the start of Worlds. Yeah. Um, but when you hear one of, like, the minor region fans – you know, hype it up so much, it, it's hard to not get sucked into that as well. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, as we're getting more questions going in the chat, uh, I know Bear String TCAF is a sub. We'll put it as a sub if either of those folks have interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, but, yeah, just open open comms. Whoever wants to talk to us can do so. Uh, you don't have to be a sub to talk. No, no, Bass, but just put your question. Yeah, into yeah. The I've only seen Bear String TCAF saying that i hate him which i don't yeah so i don't know if I, that's worth having a conversation on air yeah, about yeah, that's that's fair that's fair uh if you want to go ahead and grab uh somebody uh that would be fun. yeah i got one okay i'm gonna go check it uh this is uh this is hotline league by the way i'm talking taking your calls ben t i'm concerned about which ben t this is i might i might know you ben t uh oh no i don't think so okay I used to work with a Ben T, so I thought you might be calling in. Oh, yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. No. Where are you calling from, Ben T? Seattle, Washington. Oh, another Seattle. Another Seattle. Yep. Uh, second Seattle. we got all sorts of West Coast people on the show today. What is your topic, Ben? So I'm a little bit worried about Cloud9's chances of making it out of groups, of course, since they're with EDG and SKT. Yeah. But at the same time, with some of the casters uh, that focus on watching the LPL, talking about how EDG is probably not one of the strongest teams coming out of the LPL. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, is there, you know, what are the chances of Cloud9 actually making it out and having a good showing at Worlds despite getting a really hard group? Well, it's making and then it also, out good, a good okay. showing to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, considering the group that they're in and yeah. that they're pool three. Yeah, I, I would say so. Okay. Sorry, it, and then it you means said that you they have to be better. Point. Yeah, the second point is... Um, with AHQ, because AHQ is in that group as well, in Group A, I'm really wondering, because for Cloud9 to make it out of that group, they probably have to 2-0 AHQ. And people have been saying that LMS is really weak this year, but I'm not actually sure, especially with them going for Chavi, who has looked pretty strong. I'm wondering if AHQ is actually going to be as bad as people say that they are, or if they're going to be able to go 1-1 one one yeah. versus Cloud9. I don't know. I mean, I think you and I have the same information. I don't really follow, uh, you know, the the LMS like some of our callers, but I do feel like uh, I would say Cloud Nine has a fifty fifty chance. Maybe I don't know, Mark. Yeah. 
Uh, I would put it maybe a little lower than that. I think the LPL analysts are hedging their bets a little bit. Um, I mean, EG did win, so they have that going for them. Yeah. Uh, and as much as you might say, oh, well, you know, WE is the better team. They play slower. They're not as crazy, this and that. It's like, well, I don't know. It's 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 hard to say. I think SKT is a shoe in so you're basically fighting for one in three spots. I think AHQ, even with Chowie, might struggle. I mean, we saw C9 get out over Flash Wolves last year. Um, so it, it's still pretty possible for them to just be better um, than AHQ easily, even if they put Chowie in and they're playing better. And then the question is, you know, exactly where does EG fall? Yeah. Yep. Does this help you feel better? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, if you're saying fifty percent, that's pretty decent. Yeah, but I, I don't mean, know. It's probably. Uh, but I am not. That. You know, take it with the. No, take Travis is to the bank. Go get. Go find those esports betting sites. I mean, I will say. I will say my predictions have been pretty good lately. Okay. Rift. I'll I was the only person that. that said Rift Rivals would do. Would do. Uh, would so, show North America strength, and and that happens. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I hope Cloud Nine doesn't break my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, North America does a good job of breaking everyone's hearts. So That's true. Maybe maybe get a little bit of heart medication ready for this. Anyway, thanks so much for the call in, Ben. Yeah. Good to talk to you. And uh, let's see. We're gonna grab somebody else. Looks like looks like we're he's he's muted. So yeah. it looks like you're not gonna be able to talk to him. You you told me in Skype to to put him in. I mean he just put he just put something in chat. Well put we're trying to talk to you, but you're uh you're muted, so do you know how? Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Okay. Go go check it out. There we go. Um, we'll have uh, we're we got about eight more minutes on the show as we're winding down. Uh, well, put welcome to the show. All right. How's it going? Pretty good. Thank you for the sub. Really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Uh, uh, so what? These chaps. What do you want to talk about? Uh, well, I was just uh, wanted to talk about like in a similar vein to the last question, um, but F- Fanatic's chances of getting out of Wars. Sure. And by the way, where are you calling from, Will Pitt? Uh Ireland. Ireland? You couldn't guess. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's his mic is a little, little distant here. You know, I just want to. Uh, and by the way, people move around. We, they might have an accent, but they might have moved true, somewhere. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So you want to know Fanatic's chances? So is this what? The second part of the, or the final part of the show is just going to be all the team fans calling in, being like, you know, what are <laughs> WE's chances? What are TSM's chances? Uh, know, Mark, what do you think Fnatic's chances are? Uh, yeah, well, oh, you go first, sorry. Uh, no, 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 you carry on, carry on, carry on. Uh, I was going to say, I think they're, they're all right. Um, the big concern for me is just Broxa, because you've, we've heard it all split long for Fnatic. Uh, you heard a lot of the guys during playing stage talks, talking about Broxa being a, a bit of a liability potentially, and I don't think they've gone against like a great jungler yet. And Smithy's really good. Levi's a god. It, it obviously it's a Korean team. And it's for Longju, so you're, no matter what, you're like in a bad spot. So I feel like it could be really bad matchups if you have to worry about that. So I personally don't like Fnatic's chances for getting out of this group, and I actually think it's close between them or. Do by Marines if they're going to be able to get out. Yeah. Or so, not get out, excuse me, but even get third. Get third, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, but um, I was just wondering, because, like, uh, after, it, they, they seem pretty shaky in the play-in stage, but, like, because uh, they, they were playing around Reckless a while lot, but then um, when they got into the best of, uh, best of fives, I found that uh, it was really, like, um, they they managed to play through caps, which was like huge because they haven't managed to do that at all like before. So like uh, I was thinking maybe it's a bit more hopeful than like you know, uh, like not at all like. Yeah. So, sorry, I was uh, was doing something messaging somebody about joining the call. Oh, uh, yeah. can you repeat that for me real quick? Just you were saying that the playing stage they look still pretty sketchy, right? Yeah, pretty shaky, but like that's because like they were mainly talking, uh, they were mainly playing through like Reckless, and uh, he had like one like pretty bad game where he got caught out a few times and stuff. But uh, in the best of five, they managed to play through Caps, uh, like t- for two games, and like uh, it seemed like you know, it seemed maybe a bit more hopeful, like or maybe that's just me getting my hopes up for them. It's uh, something I think could work out for the playing stage. I think Caps is is probably better than some people give him credit for. I understand he's erratic, but like, Poe Belter's not the kind of guy who's going to destroy you in lane. Mm-hmm. 
So I, th I think like some of those matchups could be good. BDD is obviously like a beast, but uh, he did look like mediocre in in the finals. So I think maybe Caps can hold his own, but it's it's going to be really really tough for him. Reckless should still be like a, a big foe point. Um, Praying Gorilla are obviously disgusting, so it's still tough. Yeah. But uh, it, it is something where you know maybe they go for some of these more aggressive lanes. We saw him play the Varus. Uh, Var Lulu, Lulu Varus seems like a good potential thing to use. So we'll have to see. Very good. Oh, thank, thank you, Wolfpack, for the call in. Cheers, I. Thanks for having me. Good luck to your team. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was trying to do Bears first drink decaf because he was talking about how he thinks Korea is overrated, but uh, he's not on the call. He's not on the thing. He's now he's left. It's over. Yeah. Um, who it's else? Good run. We got we got time for about two more calls, and uh, let's see what else we got. Um, I'll get a Chinese perspective. Okay. Is this going to be? I'm worried about EDG's chances of getting out of groups. What what are the, the chances? Yeah, here? we'll we'll see what he's saying. Okay, okay. I'd love to hear someone come in here and talk some shit too. Yeah, yeah. Bears drink decaf. If you want to get on the show, you have to be in the general chat, the call section of the general chat. Hello. We can't we can't let you. Hello, sober comrade. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, South Florida. South Florida. Yes. How, how's the as how's everything after the hurricane hit? Uh, pretty good. I had I like lost power for like five days, but ouch, ouch. I was lucky. I was lucky. I was lucky though. Yeah. Some people had it worse, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you guys tonight? Uh, well, I think we're doing okay, I and mean, we certainly haven't it's had uh, it afternoon, yesterday. about noon after for me. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, so sober comrade, what is your question? Um. I was just thinking that I think it's fair to say that NA has pretty good chances to have as many, if not more, teams to come out of groups than China. I honestly think that's not like a crazy thing to say. Okay. Yes, why, um, why do you think that? I think China is a little overrated. I watch I watch all the playing games. I watch LCK. I don't watch a lot of LPL, but I'm, I'm like a big fan and. I mean, I watch highlights of LPL. I don't watch, you know, like draft and like all that, but I watch highlights. And I, I just think China's a little overrated, I think. And I think closer than a lot of people think. So who, the, who's the groups, overrating them? The groups them? are stacked. The groups are stacked. Like for, like, and they have easier groups than China does. Like China's in, like, I don't think RNG's making out of Group C against G2 and Samsung. Like, I, I, I think they have almost no shot in do ones but but who do you think is overrating China? Because I hear most of their analysts saying like, uh, yeah, they're only okay. And... Right, because because downplay because down down downplaying your region is nice because then you you can't be disappointed, right? Like, right. Well, yeah, but the analysts I think are usually pretty good at being honest, honest about stuff. I mean, they're usually uh, honest in their. Opinion. I like Prosper. I, I I like the Chinese analysts, but. So you think that the analysts are? Do you think they're downplaying China? Because it sounds like you you were saying that they're downplaying, but yeah, I, I think they're downplaying China, especially because like. Well, you just said hear, China's like, not going to get out of groups, or that NA has better. Yeah, but chances. They, they think. So, but I, I believe that they think so. You know, they're they're Chinese fans, obviously. Like they they're OPL fans, but I hear like you know if I'm listening to like the dive, it's like a podcast, mm -hmm. like LPL, like and like I I hear LPL like a lot of love for LPL. I, I feel like of um love for na like i think na's play is like at a high level yeah yeah but i think you can say at least historically you can understand where they're coming from because even when Absolutely, yeah even when edg or like you know that that horrible season five performance happened for china right. i mean na did even worse right and i and i feel like um this year you know everybody says you know this year is the year and all that but like just looking at the chinese teams like uzi doesn't look like he used to look like uh like, I've yet to see, like, what's up with him. But, like, I feel like the, the players are – and, you know, the players that are dominating China, they're, they're Korean. Like, you know, Scout is great, and although he's not there, but he's he's great. But I, I just think China's a little overrated. I think uh, NA is going to perform. Well, we'll, we'll think, uh, find out next week. So, yeah. So here's excited. the thing. There's Group A and Group D, which both have a Chinese and North American team. And then right. there's Group C with – 
G2. Do you think China outplaces any of the Western teams? Um, oh, in Group A, right? Because Cloud9 is in Group A? Yeah, so Cloud9 or EDG. EDG. So. Yes, EDG will probably finish second in that group, most okay. likely. But I think RNG is out. I mean, I mean, you know, I don't know how. G- I'm not so confident with you, right? But I think G2 is good. I, like, besides, you know, what? It's funny. It's because like, G2, G2's most shaky players to me are the, their Korean players. Like, their imports are kind of shaky. Yeah, Trick uh, has done bottom, some bottom bottom trade. Yeah, Trick Ed. Yeah, Trick Ed. Expect, expect kind of like steady, I guess. But yeah, so I don't know. I, I feel like G2 can can beat uh, can beat RNG, and then you look at Group D. Um, and make it out. I don't know. Like, I heard you talking about it on Beyond the Rift, Mark, uh, W, and TSM. Like, they're both gonna make it out. It's just a matter of the order. Like, greatest league talks or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, and then uh, Immortals. I think they can make it out. Um, that's gonna be a really fun group to watch. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I uh, I believe historical relevance. I believe uh, it's been tough for NA when you compare it to China, and I think. China will do all right. I mean, what I can definitely say with confidence, and thank you, Sober Comrade, for calling in. Hope things uh, get better in, in Florida. What I can definitely say with confidence is NA will outperform EU at Worlds. And I don't think Ooh. anyone's surprised by that. That's uh, that's pretty obvious, right, Mark? I mean, it is a little unfortunate that, you know, we don't have a team with a higher placing European team in the group. Mm. Like I would have loved to see nine ended up in Group C just just for like the the fun of it. I understand as an NA fan, you're like, no, I don't want to go to Group C, but yeah. it would be a lot of fun just because right now technically Immortal should be better than Fnatic. The two versus three seed, TSM versus Misfits. TSM should be better. The one C versus the two C, right? So in direct head to head, this might this might be a little biased to make NA look better. It's just gonna be a question of how far G two gets. And yeah. It's unfortunate we don't have C nine going up against them or something. Very good. Well, that was the last call. So this is the end of Hotline League. I'll stick around for the next 10 or 15 minutes hanging out with the chat. Mark, I know you got to go, but is there anything that you would like to say? This is our last show that we'll be doing at least while I'm in uh, North America. So I love doing the show. It's a lot of fun. You get perspectives that you sometimes can't get just through text or anything. So like the caller tonight yeah. from LA, uh, Latin, Latin South was just great. Uh, and I would love to keep having conversation with fans like that. Yeah. You know what? I think one of the things I was thinking about recently was one of the more recent episodes of League Weekly that we did, we got a lot of heat from Reddit for just like, you know, all patting ourselves on the back or whatever. So it's kind of nice now that there, and I think a lot of shows have that as well, which is fine. You know, like analysts are going to talk to analysts and that's a really insightful conversation, but it is kind of fun to do the show where the community can really give us their feedback, their take on stuff. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much uh, for watching, everyone. Uh, the VOD, if you missed any of this, is up on my YouTube channel, or it will be uh, by probably tomorrow. It should be should be up there. Uh, that's uh, youtubecom slash Travis Gafford. Of course, you can support us over at travisgafford.com slash support I will be buying Mark dinner tonight, uh, and so you can help me cover that. Bill. I eat a lot. He does, and we're going to a Korean barbecue place. It's not all you can eat, so it's going to be. Empty the piggy bank. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, that's the show. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Tune in next time for even more fun.